hello uh, so we will wait for two more minutes and then i will start at six five okay hello so uh, this session uh, i will start with some uh, coordination chemistry and uh, one uh, inorganic and uh, the other one is uh, uh, hmot okay so i will introduce myself i am anjali negi currently pursuing phd in iit kanpur so let's start the session ma'am uh, yes shika Ma'am, last week there was class. No, there was no class. So the uh, last week class is scheduled uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, same time. Same time. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. everyone in this video i will be solving gate 2012 chemistry question number 43 this question state that if if a mixture of nacl concentrated h2so4 and k2cr2o7 is heated in a dry test tube a red vapor 
denoted as P is formed. And this vapor P when dissolved in aqueous NaOH, it form a yellow solution, which upon treatment with AgNO3 forms a red solid Q. Now we have to find out P and Q respectively. So we are given with four different options and we have to find out the correct option. So the given, uh, uh, so the given test or uh, simply the reaction is actually the chromyl chloride test. This chromyl chloride test is a mixture of salt uh, is done by using the mixture of salt and an equal amount of solid potassium trichromate that is K2Cr2O7 uh, when added in a test tube and concentrated H2SO4 is further added to it such that the reaction is reaction goes like this so salt NaCl K2Cr2O7 is uh, heated with uh, concentrated sulfuric acid it forms uh, another salt KHSO4 and chromyl chloride which is red vapor CrO2Cl2 and other salt and water okay yes so <clears throat> so as given in the question that after this this red vapor which is chromite chloride is passed okay is passed uh, uh, this vapor dissolves in aqueous NaOH to form a yellow solution so the reaction of chromyl chloride with my aqueous NaOH will give me Na2CrO4 plus 2 NaCl and H2SO4 and this Na2CrO4 is my next reactant so this will be uh, this will this is uh, this forms a yellow solution and when treat, treat, uh, treatment with the uh, silver nitrate, that is AgNO3, it forms some red solid, which is Q. Now, for that, we, it will follow the given reaction, given uh, equation, um, like Na2CrO4, the yellow solution, when treatment with AgNO3, so it basically gives me a, uh, Ag2CrO4 and NaNO3, correct? And so this is my, this is my Q and this is my red solid, okay. Hmm. So if, um, so this uh, particular test that is the chromyl chloride test is actually done uh, to find out uh, that um, there is a presence of chloride ion in the salt so the salt that we have taken earlier in the first equation that was NaCl salt so if Cl is my chloride here then ultimately I will uh, my uh, my chromyl chloride test will be positive and it will be done basically in this similar two step one step two step and after the second step the yellow solution which I have obtained this solution so uh, this is actually divided into two different parts and if I acidify uh, the first part with acetic acid and then add lead acetate solution to it. So the formation of yellow precipitate of lead chromate confirms the presence of chloride ion in the given salt. Okay, but here in the case of our problem that was given, uh, the yellow solution that was formed, it was not, uh, 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 was not, uh, added with acetic acid or acidified but it was just uh, reacted uh, the reaction was done with silver nitrate such that uh, there is what uh, red solid was formed that is Ag2CrO4 okay so yes for, for the given problem that we have in our hand uh, my P and my Q were 
so my p was the vapor so the vapor that was uh, in the first uh, reaction was chromyl chloride theek hai okay so this is cro2 cl2 this was the vapor so we have two different option for it and the other option is yeah so the other option that we have that is q that is a uh, solid is again ag2cro4 okay so the option number d is the correct option and i will refer you to go through uh, nptel reference that is the main group chemistry by professor ms balakrishna department of chemistry iit bombay here is the link below thank you so if you have any doubt otherwise we will move to the next problem everyone in this video i will be solving gate 20 2012 uh, 2012 uh, which is uh, chemistry question number 54 so this question is uh, basically a uh, uh, linked question 54 and 55 so we will uh, have two different video of each part 1 part 2 so let's solve part 1 here first that is uh, 54 so the statement for linked question number 54 and 55 are that the hucker molecular orbital theory can be applied to the alene radical so this is my alene radical okay yeah so this is my alene radical so you uh you know that uh, so we will discuss the basic of hucker orbital theory and how it is applied to the conjugated system planar system so in my first question number 54 here the secular determinant determinant that is where alpha beta and e have their usual meaning is given by so we are given with four different option and we need to find out the correct option for the secular determinant for the given alene radical molecule okay so let's move into some basic so the basic of hucker molecular orbital theory we will discuss here okay so hmo in short cut that we can say for hucker molecular orbital theory is an approximate method which simplify the variation method to treat planar conjugated hydrocarbons okay so the hucker theory treats only the pi electrons in a planar conjugated molecule this is a point to be noted that it only treats a pi electron in a planar conjugated molecule so hmo calculation are actually carried out using variation method and the lcao that is linear combination of atomic orbital that is pi uh, to the molecular orbital approximation okay so the basis set for mo that is the molecular orbital approximation consists of one p pi orbital on each atom so here if we are dealing with hydrocarbon so we are dealing in uh, for the p orbital of uh, carbon atom and the sigma skeleton of the conjugated molecule is assumed to be frozen so that is the assumption here so according to linear combination of atomic orbital molecular orbital approximation the mo is written as for any given molecule as so this here is uh, let's say a so this is psi that is the wave function will be written as the summation over i equal to 1 to n where my ci is just uh, 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 some uh, parameter or constant uh, with each wave function at 
each carbon atom that is 2p z i okay so whether it is 2p z 1 2p z 2 2p z 3 and the approximation energy that we can calculate from the given wave function that we uh, just uh, 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 that we just got from the uh, LPAO MO approximation that the energy that we can calculate is so it is the integral over psi conjugate A Hamiltonian operator and this is psi A again and d tau which is just dx dy dz okay that is the volume and this is again divided by the integral over psi conjugate a psi a d tau okay so actually i have just written a as alpha here so pardon me so this hamiltonian um, h operator that is the hamiltonian operator is actually it incorporates the effect of the interaction of pi electrons with the rest of the molecule okay so in hmo method so what happens is that the pi electron are assumed to be moving in a potential generated by the nuclei and a and sigma electron of the molecule okay so this pi electron are assumed to be moving and the electron electron repulsion are neglected in the pi hamiltonian of conjugated molecule so they are neglected here so yes so again just uh, one point to note here that uh, for any planar conjugated hard hydrocarbon so the only atomic orbitals of pi symmetry are the 2p pi orbital on carbon correct and in the module uh, or in this uh, particular that i will discuss so uh, uh, we have assumed that uh, the molecule is in xy plane with the pi orbital in the z axis and the z axis okay so this is a perpendicular to the molecular plane and that is why we take 2p z 2p z 2p z orbital for to denote the uh, pi orbitals on each carbon atom okay so let's take the aline radical that we have in our problem so uh, we will apply the hmo theory here so this is my aline molecule okay and we just denote the carbon as 1, 2, and 3. And this is uh, the conjugated system for as uh, you will see that this radical will just move like correct. And so that will be the conjugation in the given molecule, aline radical. Okay. So it is just a 3 pi electron system. So two from here and one from here. So it's a three pi electron system. The Huckel orbital, uh, molecular orbital wave function for this system becomes. So the wave function for this particular system, how you can write it? Just write it as like psi A equal to, this will be C1, C2, C3, where because it's a three carbon and three electron, uh, three pi electron system. So we have up to uh, C3 only and uh, so c1 multiplied with the wave function psi 2p z1 2p z2 and psi 2p z3 and the secular equation that we can obtain from here is so the equation that you can write is something which you can write like hamiltonian 1 1 minus e s 1 1 c1 as uh, as a common factor of all again for similarly for h12 minus e s12 so i will uh, i will just uh, make it clear what is this hamiltonian 1 1 it's hamiltonian 1 2 and hamiltonian 1 3 okay so all this so for three uh, different carbon we have three secular equation that we obtain and these are equal to zero and we can write it in the form of a secular determinant of order 3 as shown below. So the number of pi electron we have in hand, uh, so we will have 3 cross 3 of uh, 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 secular determinant, okay. So this is my 3 cross 3, correct. And uh, so I can take this one as uh, 
other C1, C2, C3 as a matrix and just write it in a secular determinant form, the equation uh, above. So once we write uh, it in a secular determinant form, we can actually show that this cannot be equal to zero, hence this will be equal to zero, okay? And in the case of allene radical, just note that the carbon one is attached to carbon two, carbon two is attached to carbon three, but carbon one is not attached to carbon number three. So they are not connected to each other. Hence, when they are not connected to each other, so the overlap integral that is S here will be equal to zero. So, so S13 will be zero, S31 will be zero, yes yeah so this will be zero this will be zero and uh, just to solve the secular determinant uh, for an n pi electron system or for example we have three so this Huckel so what Huckel did Huckel treated the h i i h i j s i i s i j integrals uh, as parameter that can be evaluated empirically by fitting the theory to experimental results. So H I J, H I J. So what is H I J? H I J is just an integral over the wave function, the conjugate of uh, psi i uh, operator, my Hamiltonian operator, and again my wave function psi j. So when my i is equal to j, so when these both are the same i equal to j so my h i j will be uh, just uh, a coulomb integral and it will be denoted as alpha but when my i is not equal to j so my h i j will be denoted as beta which is just a resonance integral okay and my s i j is the simple overlap integral for the wave function psi i psi j for my i is equal to j, it will be 1, but when my i not equal to j, then the overlap integral is equal to 0. So taking into account the assumption of HMO theory that I have just discussed here, uh, the secular determinant transform into Huckel determinant, okay? And how it will be transformed? Something like where my H11, H22, H33, are equal to alpha which is my coulomb integral you can write it as alpha and my h12213132332 uh, that is my i not equal to j will be beta which is my resonance integral remember that for my i equal to j in s that is my overlap integral so it will be one otherwise it will be equal to zero so remember all this in mind and so when we finally do the Huckel determinant, which is from secular determinant going to Huckel determinant, but we will, you will just have to uh, carefully uh, put the value of uh, H that is alpha or beta, whether it is I equal to J or whether it is I not equal to J. So once I do that and uh, keeping in mind that my overlap integral is only equal to one when my I equal to j that is my s11 s22 and s33 only this part will be one other will be zero so we get here e e e and other zero 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 and for hamiltonian um yeah for hamiltonian it is very important to know that uh, it is equal to beta when they are connected okay so resonance integral is only there when they are connected to each other but in the case of h13 so when my h13 is there so in the case of allene it is equal to zero and h31 it, it is again equal to zero okay oh wait a minute so here it should be here it should be beta not zero so only this part and this part is zero in the determinant and you can just uh, show here that this is not equal to zero so the only this portion will be equal to zero and hence we can uh, now uh, calculate the determinant of this particular uh, that we have in in our hand and then we can find the value of e 
So up to here we have the part A solved. Okay. So the correct option for uh, question number fifty-four is option number A. Okay. So this is the correct option. And I will refer you to go through the NPTEL reference Hakkal MOT one by Professor Anindya Datta, Department of Chemistry, IIT Bombay. Here is the link below. Thank you. Yeah, so if you have any doubt, you can ask. Okay, so I will share other part of the problem. Hello everyone. So in this video, this is the part two of uh, question number fifty-five. Uh, that is the. Uh, Day 2012 chemistry question number 55. This is the linked question to 54. So uh, we have to find out the possible value of uh, E that are option A, B, C, D from the given correct secular determinant that we have find out in our part one that you can look. And so let's solve the problem now. Yes, for the part B of uh, the uh, problem that we have that is question number 54 uh, 55 sorry so after getting the secular determinant for our alene radical that is this one we have to solve it uh, and find out we have to find the value of e that is the energy of the molecule okay so let's put to solve this let's put uh, uh, alpha minus e upon beta as lambda so when I substitute this, you can just simply, what you can do that you can just simply uh, divide whole uh, this determinant as from beta. So we will have alpha minus E upon beta, 1, 0. This is 1. Alpha minus E upon beta, this is 1. This is 0, 1. And this is alpha minus E upon beta. And once you do that and you put this as uh, lambda so we will have lambda lambda 1 0 1 lambda 1 0 1 lambda x is equal to 0 and once you solve it you know how to solve the determinant so uh, taking this that is alpha and multiplying this and this okay so we have lambda lambda square minus 1 and taking this so we will have minus 1 we will have lambda minus 0 and ultimately so this will be 0 multiplied by this and this so i have just uh, removed it and equal to 0 so once you solve this we have uh, lambda q minus 2 lambda equal to 0 and basically if i take lambda as common we have lambda square minus 2 is equal to 0 so what i can do is i can put lambda is equal to 0 it's my one root and so basically when you have 3 by 3 secular determinant you have uh, 3 roots that is the three solution to that particular determinant okay so we have lambda is equal to 0 my lambda square is equal to 2 and my lambda will be plus minus under the root 2 so this 1 2 3 just keep uh, lambda value here and find out the value of e so this will be alpha minus sorry alpha minus e by beta is equal to zero so my e will be alpha and my e will be here will be from here alpha minus under the root two beta and this final will be alpha plus under the root two 
beta so my ultimate root will be uh, e value will be alpha alpha minus under root 2 beta comma alpha plus under the root 2 beta so this is the solution okay for the part b that is question number 55 the possible values of energy e for the given secular determinant that we find out in the part one of the solution for the alien radical we have the correct option in option number a that is my alpha plus under the root 2 beta uh, comma alpha comma alpha minus under the root 2 beta and i have the npkl reference as hakal mot uh, 1 by professor anindya datta department of chemistry iit bombay so here is the link below thank you Okay, so I will share another problem if you guys don't have any doubt if you have you can type if delta Hello everyone, in this video I will be solving gate 2017 chemistry question number 38. This question state this question state that if delta naught is the octahedral splitting energy and P is the electron pairing energy, then the crystal field stabilization energy CSS CSSC of this complex coordination coordinate complex is so we have to find out hello everyone in this video I will be solving gate 27 and the state this complex so in an octahedral complex this state uh, represents the degeneracy of all the 5d orbital in the isolated central line and the state 2 represent the hypothetical degeneracy of all the orbital at a higher energy level. If the negative charge of all the ligands is assumed to be uniformly affecting the electrons in the d orbital of the metal line. So the state number 3 is actually uh, this represent the crystal scale splitting. So uh, in octahedral complex as uh, uh, our so in, uh, in an octahedral complex the coordination number is 6 and the metal ion is at the center and the ligand uh, occupy the 6th corner of the octahedron Okay, so
so we know that the orbitals um, uh, which are <coughs> dx square minus y square and dz square are oriented along the axis uh, and the other orbital uh, remain in between the axis which are dxy dyz and dzx so in case of octahedral complex the these two orbitals these two orbitals are uh, designated as eg so in octahedral complex these two orbitals are designated as eg eg and the other three are t to g okay And as the ligand approaches the central line, the along the axis, the electron uh, is present in the eg orbital. In the eg orbital, so is repelled more by the ligand electrons uh, than the in comparison with the t two g one. Hence, uh, we see that the energy of the uh, d z square and d x square minus y square these orbital. is much more in comparison to the in comparison to the dxy dyz and dzx or by the way okay Delta naught is the crystal field splitting energy, and uh, this is actually, uh, if we say this is uh, from the Berry center, it is uh, plus x, and from the Berry center, t to g is uh, st uh, stabilized uh, as y. So we will say x plus y if if it is equal to delta naught, which is my CFSC, is equal to 10 dq naught. So my x is in in octahedral field is equal to three by five of delta naught. That is the in terms of dq it is six, and y is two by five of delta naught. In terms of dq it is equal to four. So t two g electrons, uh, each of them is actually stabilized by minus four dq, and uh, electron in the eg, and eg electron are destabilized by plus six. D Q naught. These are actually with respect to the unsplit Berry center, which is here. And hence, we can say that the total energy of the system is conserved before and after splitting. Okay. So the ligands which causes a large splitting delta of the d orbital are referred to as the strong field ligand. And the complex such as. Uh, 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 This, for example, given below, is called a low spin, and uh, the example of one ligand is an anti negative. So, in this complex, that the example is shown below is actually we can see that this, the delta not is so large that pair uh, pairing is possible in this case. Okay, so we see that no electron is in an eg orbital, but uh, there is a pairing. Uh, Wait. So if we have taken d5, for example, so initially it was all unpaired electron. Okay, and after uh, the strong field ligand, uh, we have we ex uh, it experienced uh, octahedral splitting. Uh, Or where the delta naught value is very large, the CFSC is very large, so pairing takes place, and uh, this complex looks something like this. Now, the ligands, for example, uh, iodine I negative and Br negative, which causes a small splitting delta of the d orbital, are referred to as a weak field ligand. And uh, these uh, and the complexes are known as high spin complex, which are formed. So this is the uh, example of a high spin complex for a d five. 
electron system electronic configuration so we get uh, delta not s delta not delta not is very small so uh, no pairing takes place in this so in high spin complex uh, always remember that pairing doesn't take place okay so in general this is the crystal field splitting uh, energy increase as the ligand varies in the following order so in the following order if we go from left to right we see that there uh, are uh, uh, in, there is an increased value of the delta so high, uh, there is a high uh, higher splitting and so we i can say that uh, cn negative is uh, a weak a strong field ligand causing a higher delta not uh, delta not value okay now let's solve our question so our question is that uh, yes so my question was to uh, solve the to find out the cfsc of the given complex so for the given complex uh, my cobalt is in 2 plus oxidation state where i can write the electronic configuration as this which is 3d7 so 3d7 before i uh, fill up the electrons in the uh, t2g and eg orbital of the uh, my uh, of, of my complex i should first note two points the first one is uh, that ammonia is actually considered as a is considered as a strong field but in case of uh, cobalt 2 plus we see it uh, that the uh, that it makes a high spin high, high spin complex and in case of cobalt 3 plus it makes a low spin complex so uh, yeah also uh, here you can uh, uh, you can note that uh, as the charge or uh, the oxidation state of my metal line increases uh, so uh, it also affects the CSSE such that as the, char as the uh, uh, oxidation state increases my delta not value also increases okay When we fill this, my complex is in, in what is in high spin because my uh, oxidation state of my cobalt is 2 plus. So this will be 1, 2, 3, okay, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this was uh, We note that in high spin, that in high spin complex, no pairing energy is there, okay? Because no pairing is taking place besides the one which are already paired. So, the CFSC of cobalt 2 
uh, complex which is given will be so there are total five into minus So the CSST of cobalt plus 2 will be uh, 5 electron in T2G which will be uh, minus 0 0.4 delta naught plus there are 2 electrons so 2 into 0 0.6 delta naught giving the value of Giving me the value of minus 0 0.8 delta naught. So the correct option for the question number 38 is that uh, option number C, okay. For this, I will refer you to go through the lecture Bonding in Complexes 3 by Professor Debashish Ray, Department of Chemistry, IIT Kharagpur. This is the YouTube link for that. Thank you. So you can ask your doubt. I think Gunasli you have joined a little bit late and uh, missed one problem, right? One part of the problem. Conjugated system. Shikha, you have any doubt? No, ma'am. Okay. I think Gunasli, yeah, please explain spectrochemical and spectrochemical series, Netflixatic series. So complete. Uh, and the complexes are known as this I think it will be better if I take a tutorial on this so you have any particular problem related to this one This is spectro, correct? T. T will be there, no? Okay, so...
what do you want to understand in spectrochemical series like uh, how the strong and weak ligands are uh, uh, classified in greater and decreasing order of the uh, co- corresponding elect- uh, uh, electrostatic uh, radiation correct okay so the difference between okay wait i actually have to look in the other term that you are asking me the nephloxetic series so uh it's good one so i will uh the remaining time that we actually have like 10 minutes or so in every session so tomorrow we have other session another session uh, that is a compensation session for the Uh, last week to stay uh, live session that we i scheduled i rescheduled it okay so tomorrow i will uh, take this topic the difference between the spectrochemical and nephlexotic series okay so uh, if gunasli you will not be there then i will not uh, i will prepare the tutorial but i will not play it <laughs> okay so you have to attend okay ma'am please yeah. uh, i contact you in uh, email mail id ma'am okay ma'am oh my mail id uh, i yes ma'am i already have mm. so you ma- mailed me no ma'am okay okay oh. so yeah thank you for attending so tomorrow we will meet and in, in the same uh, 6 to 7 pm okay uh, thank you okay ma'am thank you ma'am Thank you ma'am. Yeah.